Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Beyond the Ordinary Show. Today, we're with Catalina Haley talking about restoring the original soul fragmentation and releasing the imprints of separation from the brain and body. It's going to deep discussion. So much is shifting right now. There's a greater awareness that we're having that is actually assisting our physical body in assimilating what's coming through and what's being released. And Catalina has her finger on the bolts and she, actually she's going through experiences and embodiments of this so that she can hold the torch for others that are going on similar paths, leading forward and and not just restoring what's been possible, but also bringing in what we're ready to receive that we haven't been ready for before. Huge conversation, y'all. We're going to get into live Q&A. Um, there will be a transmission that we will experience with Kathleen a little bit later on the call. And of course, Kathleen's special offer something that we're going to review a little bit later, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm excited to let that cat out of the bag a little bit later on the call. Um, and with that, Kathleen, welcome back to BTO. Yeah, thank you, John. Always amazing to be here. Love your mm -hmm. audience, love you. So it's, yeah, and the energy. I mean, as soon as I came on with you, I was like, yeah, there's always so much energy that's here, ready to step into, see what comes it up. It just pops open. Yeah. It, you know, we have your bio and we can read it, but sometimes I just get the sense that the finding you by who you were yesterday doesn't quite... Um, live up to what's here currently so why don't you share um how it is that you're assisting in these waves of awakening and new consciousness for the people who tune into you yeah um <clears throat> well let's see i um so i have recognition that how i chose to incarnate carries um, such a vast field of information and has had so much participation within everything that we know, within all of the false matrix, within the creation of this earth, within the universal complex and far beyond that. And so um, what has been in my personal journey as Kathleen, as the, um, you know, the embodiment of that is the um, unpacking, so to speak, that journey within this physical vehicle, because of course the physical vehicle is the conduit for our soul's expression, right? And and uh, and that's really what it's been. And and how is that? Well, you know, we think of, excuse me a second. We think of you know ascension, it's incension, right? So we're embodying who we are and and what are we really doing is that letting go you know it's that continual dropping into the present moment being curious and uh and expanding you know your own um awareness and, and consciousness around and it's it's massive you know so i say that now i'm in such a greater awareness of really my soul's agreement and and that is to um you know, sort of step in and through my journey and all of our journeys, this is really what we're, we're all here for, is as we embody who we are, as we let go, as we discover who we are, then there is the releasing out and the letting go of all that we are not, but all that that is, um, you know, this, this false matrix that's been created. And um, so, you know, I always say it's really, really simple and really hard. So it's this, uh, the simple part is like, go and be yourself. The hard part is like, go and be yourself. But I want to emphasize the profundity of that from a, you know, multidimensional level, you know, we, as a human, we, we say, okay, yes, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to, I'm going to find out who I am and I'm going to show up and, we can often think that that's just little me and I'm, I'm doing that for me and I want to, and it's desirable and I want this amazing life. But what I want to emphasize is that it's a quantum field and, you know, it, this, everything is connected. And so when you're doing that, you are um, literally enhancing and affecting all. And if you happen to have a lot of information 
in your soul's agreement in this, so I say sort of the size of your energetic field, and this is the various lifetimes and all of that, then it has even a greater influence. And, and so how do we expand our, our, um, you know, energetic field is by that embodiment, by that letting go. And it's almost like, so, so I let go. And, and as the body becomes <clears throat> lighter and, you know, softer, movable, whatever, just in my journey, I can flexible and movable energetically. It's also doing that and waving out and it's connecting to all the levels and layers of all the many, many, many different lifetimes and all of the agreements and all the different things that have taken place in your journey here. And, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of this thing that we're not really taught, you know, that as you let go, as you continue, you know, this is how you really discover your own soul path, what you're here for, and, you know, not only what you're here for, but what, your energy does and, and who you are, you know, through this journey. I mean, if you, if you're able to relax and it's how I've been able to notice, you know, that I carry the zero point that I'm, you know, I'm a calibrator and energetics and just all the different layers and levels, you know, so, so, uh, you know, and I'm not um, unique. I mean, I have a unique energetic path and in, in, in field, but everybody here and everybody on the call is, is absolutely unique. You know, we're all absolutely unique aspects of, of source consciousness. And the way I like to look at it is like, you know, you are a unique library of information of source. So I, I, I like to think of source as a giant library and then you're the smaller library. Well, think about it like at first you only think you're a book, but then you realize, oh, well, there's two or three. And, and then there's like these novels and then there's like... <laughs> You know, and so it just becomes more and more and more information that um, that you are, and that that information is connected to all things, and it becomes calibrating and aligning, and so on and so on. And so, so this is really, and I say, what am I here to do? Is I'm here to support that. You know, that's what I'm doing even now. As I've opened up the field, it's a very large field, and so I can feel everybody here. I can feel all the energetics. I can feel anybody who will come into this field, anything like that. And just kind of scanning and feeling and looking at the field. And, and the way that my particular energetics works is as I scan, it begins to shift it and does, because I said, there's a calibration in my field. And, um, you know, the, again, the way I like to look at that is that think of yourself as a puzzle piece in this giant quantum field, but you're not a flat puzzle piece. You're a spherical moving puzzle piece. And as you let go and be yourself, then you intricately, beautifully align with all things. Well, that's really what happens when the focus of this consciousness that I chose to incarnate as moves in that direction, it begins to open it, you know, this sort of stuff that's going on. And it's just, and it's massive. You know, we talked, we were talking just before we got on the call about the timelines and, you know, and what's happening. And I, and my personal experience is that I was telling you that it's like it's flipping through the the mind space, you know, because what we're what we're attempting to do is to align um, not only our our mind with our heart space, but the mind all energy with the heart space. Which, when we align that, that's when we can really experience this quantum field and all things within it. And and that's what what I see the timelines are are those experiences, whether this lifetime or other lifetimes, and they're, they're coming up rapidly, you know, very, very rapidly. That's what it felt like to me, like, you know, and I could feel it through the, through the mind, through the brain. And I also felt it through the body, but because I have, you know, done my work and I know who I am, just take a breath and drop into that zero point, And then it goes, and it just, you become, you know, one with that quantum field and, and you come into that one timeline of which we desire, which is that pure ascension timeline, you know? And as I, I said prior to the call, this is, we've been doing this for eons of time and we're, we're, we're succeeding now. So it's, it's just really an amazing time, regardless of what we think is all going on, you know, the more that we can come into our center point and let go of all the things that are doing that, this is like you'll you'll feel that, and you'll be in perfect alignment, and uh, with you know your soul's agreement. So, mm -hmm. 
That's beautiful. There's, as you speak of the calibrations, I'm in, we're going through very specific micro calibrations right now with our physical body and with our brain uh, that's helping to um, calibrate with the etheric body and what we've been receiving and adjusting to in those ascension timelines as well. I'd love it if you would get into about what you're seeing collectively or for even, or even this collective for what you're seeing is happening in those micro calibrations and what are the macro calibration that they're um, engendering? Well, the micro is, is so much. I mean, it's a lot of, excuse me, the physical body. It's a mm -hmm. lot of, um, I mean, like I've been guided to a lot of cleansing lots of cleansing, you know, lots of parasite cleansings, lots of, lots of different ways in which to calibrate the body because, you know, the body obviously is the, the, uh, you know, our soul is, is using this as a vehicle. So in order for us to align with that highest potential timeline and source consciousness, the body has to be able to sustain those frequencies. So there's so much from that little micro level of the physical, the physical body aspect, you know, there's just, it's just so much happening there. And then with that, the, the macro level is that um, when we can come into that alignment, um, then, you know, we're starting to see, um, or I'm starting to see the calibrations taking place of um, community uh, thought process, things that that I think are going to come into the physicality are, are very much um, created in the ether. Everything's created in ether first, but I'm seeing that, you know, the, the idea of the authentic communities and the expression of, of um, you know, free energy and, and um, mystery schools and all these types of things, you know, we've been, people have been talking about these for, for many years, but now through this calibration of the body, I'm uh, the mastery of our who we really are is showing up in the quantum field. So that's what I'm experiencing. And, mm -hmm. and so as I'm stepping with a, another person, I'm now expressing that. So they come into the field and then they can then come into that expression. But it depends on, again, their physicality. So depending on where the person is, they'll they can come in and they can have you know disturbance in the body and so we shift things and move things and a lot of you know the implants all those different things are very much coming to the surface and all the different ways in which you know we've had a lot of interference in the body but um yeah i mean it's it's so vast of what's really taking place that um it'd be hard to to really narrow it down into sort of one thing <laughs> And th there is a way that we can help to facilitate what's happening in the body again, rest, mm -hmm. being in nature, being aware of the shifts that are going through and, and not getting into the, the fight or flight of separation mm -hmm. of where we're leaving ourselves because we have to be in, in a place where we're used to being to protect ourselves, to, to, to put up boundaries for the energies that are coming in. And so what I actually feel is, is a template of wholeness coming in mm -hmm. where rather than creating war with that sense of separation, we're getting to see it for what it is and we're restoring it back to an original template. So uh, as we, yeah. as we talk about that template that comes in, I'd love it if we maybe just take a step back and get into original soul fragmentation. Can, can you define that for everybody listening right now? So we can go ahead and get into the releasing the imprint of where that fragmentation came, came from. Well, the way I like to describe it is very simplistic. And so, you know, say I'm a little girl and I'm playing in the dirt and, you know, somebody comes along and says, a girl doesn't do that then what happens is um, my library of information, you know, it's like one of my books. So my soul basically fragments and one of my book fragments and say the book that fragments is freedom. And so now I, I, I take that out and I imprint in its place rigidity. And so how that begins to play out in your life is that say I go to create a career in my life, 
I'm most likely going to pick something practical and not something of my heart because I've got that imprint that freedom is rigidity. Until I restore that, I bring that soul fragment back home and release that imprint. And it's always through the brain and body because again, the brain and bo the body is the mechanism of our soul's agreement. And really um, the, the journey that we're on is really about mastering the mind because it's through the mind space that all of the belief systems have come in. And basically what we've been doing is we've been taking our consciousness, our, our soul, our library of information, and we're sitting it inside of our brain, our physical brain, attaching it to these belief systems until we don't, you know? And so it's about detaching that dropping into the heart space, restoring that fragment because, and how do I do that? Well, I get to discover me. It's like I start, when I start to say to myself, well, is that really my belief system? Is that really what I feel? But because it's so many different layers and so on, that's why I do what I do is to help release all of that from the brain and body. And so that they then have a, better, a cleaner template to be able to drop in and have those authentic experiences. Because the reason that they struggle is because everything's about matching frequencies. That's all we're doing in human existence is matching frequencies, right? And think of frequencies simply as emotions. And so by universal law, faster moving frequencies always try to raise slower ones up to match them, right? So example would be if you and I come around each other and I'm happy and you're mad, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna irritate you because I'm vibrating at a faster rate and because my happy is trying to raise you up. So as long as I stay happy, you only have two choices. You either get happy with me or you go away. Well, this is this thing that's happening to, you know, it's everything's about matching frequencies. So as we are, um, you know, letting go of that detaching, coming out of our, our mind space, dropping into the heart space, that those voices and those are still reaching out for matches in other ways. So, so we have to drop into that neutrality and expand our energetics. Cause that's the thing too. It's this interesting thing that we've been taught is to protect and, and, and pull in, you know, but when we do that, we actually create a density. So we actually now are matching the very things we don't desire. But if instead I take a breath and I expand my energetics, then I'm expanding my pure I am presence, which is the highest frequency. So I'm, I'm actually vibrating as pure pr prime creator. So no other frequency can sustain itself in that field. So it's, it's really, this is this whole inversion, right? Everything's backwards. So this idea of protecting. So if you, if, if you want to even use the word protecting, think of protecting as expanding my energy, not contracting my energy. But I don't even like the word <clears throat> protecting. I think more of just becoming aware. You're becoming aware of what you're engaging in. And, and it's massive, you know? And, and of course, the more that we wake up, the more that we notice, you know? And I, I like to use it like, so when, when I just described that example of, you know, the higher frequency always tries to raise the slower one up and, and you would be irritated by me, well, the, in this incension, right? It's not ascension, it's incension, right? So we're embodying who we are. Well, some of the first things that can happen as we are embodying our I am presence, because we are fifth dimensional higher beings, the body's vibrating at the denser rate. So as I am embodying myself, I can irritate my own body. And so this is often why when people are starting to embody who they are, they have all these disruptions in the physical body. But then if they go into the fear, because that's the mechanism that kicks you into that, then you tr contract back in and then you just create more of, of what you don't desire. So, so the challenge is dropping in and being curious. Hmm. What am I experiencing? And beginning to remember, oh yeah, it's energy and frequency. What am I feeling? And so as you drop in, you can start to notice, wow, okay, I'm I'm tense. I'm why am I doing this? You know, and this is this is the key, right? The body's everything. This is the millionaire, this is the relationship, everything's right here. This is the magic. That's why I said it's way more than we realize when we're when we're letting go and embodying here, we're it's everything out there, right? Because of course it's messaging, right? But it's also this huge connection to the quantum field. Yeah, I think it's really important that when we ask the questions, what is it that I'm feeling here, th that it's not superficial, glazed over, well, I am frustrated, I'm angry. It's like, 
really going deep with it and going to the vulnerable part of the heart, like that real <clears throat> pain point or the real emotion and, and extrapolating from the core, because we can, we can peel off layers of the onion and, and it, it can be somewhat satisfying for a short period of time. But unless we really take the opportunity to, to go with a scalpel, to, to really be vulnerable enough to name what it really is or to be with what's really happening, um, that's when the true shifts, I believe, really begin to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I think of it as, uh, you know, we're just kids on the playground, right? And so in this idea of, of even going in and digging deep, well, what if we just started to say, okay, first get yourself very present and say, wait a minute, I'm right here. This is my body. Okay. This is my expression. What am I doing? You know, am I, am I going to go into a fear? Am I, what am I doing? Can I, can I be in a place of curiosity? Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Can I drop in like the little kid and go, wait, okay. I can go, oh, okay. I don't know what that is. Right. And so that can be my first reaction, but then I can say, well, wait a minute. Okay. If I don't know what it is, how about I just explore let me open my energy and explore a little bit. Let me let me feel, let me see. And as we do that, and if you continue to open, that's when you can go through some very deep levels. And the other piece in this, I think super important is do your best to let go of doubt and of judgment during the process because you're probably gonna have pictures and, and color, all different things are gonna happen and your brain can start to tell stories. Am I going crazy? Am I this? And then you just, again, take a breath and just, I don't know. What is crazy? What is it? You know, begin to have that expression because this is the other part. We are multidimensional and there's so much going on in this field. And the brain does not have the capability to have a knowing in the way that we've been taught as knowing because the human brain says i will know when i solidly know it but there's nothing solid so when you're coming into the awareness of yourself as energy in the quantum field it's like this subtle energies out here it's in this different field that's absolutely there but until we just say okay well maybe i don't know i know but I know. And because the other piece in this is that we've been taught in the inversion, we've had the brain communicating to the heart instead of the heart communicating to the brain. So this is another part of mastering the mind is we are now training our mind. We're cleaning house, like from the mind of whatever I've absorbed. And then I'm bringing into my physical brain what reality really is and what things are, you know, in there. And as you do that, it just, it literally, like for myself, the experience was like stepping in, it went, it's almost like the head's not even there anymore. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're in this giant brain and it's a process, but, but it, it, you know, we were so much taught to like, well, I don't know, could I be that? Could I be? Yes, you, you could. And, and it's just, we're awakening to the truth and we've just been very dumbed down you know, and, um, and I think that this is just super important for everybody to just relax and, and think of it as a giant playground. And, and when you see something, if you remember, when you stay in neutrality, you are vibrating at the highest rate. So no matter what you see, if it is not in the highest and best, if it, if it is not in alignment, it will have to dissipate because everything's about matching frequencies. And so it, it shifts it would have to shift. So how does the concepts of separation fit in here? Because but part of what you're telling us is also to separate from those things that are there, which then in effect, we're in a point of separation. Mm -hmm. And so what's the difference between that form of discernment versus and seeing the and being with the polarity of things? And, and how do we bring that into unity consciousness? Because that's really what we're striving for, what we're we're bringing back into wholeness. Mm -hmm. so, so even by going through the layers of this happened in my records and this created soul fragmentation and separation from the wholeness that I was, by going through the deconstruction of, hold on a second, what's 
well, where is it that I'm really feeling here? We're not really separating or trying to get rid of something. We're actually looking to bring it into cohesion by having a unifying connection or if you will, conversation with it so it can come back into the homeostasis and, and be here to propel us forward rather than anchoring, our, anchoring us backwards. Well, I would take that a step further to say that the reality is that we are never separate and that what's really going on is the illusion of the separation. And so, you know, if that's why I keep saying, if we can be in a place of neutrality and simply have the experience, then we're releasing uh, kind of out those belief systems and all of those things that have created this identity, this persona, this, this idea of the separation that continues and perpetuates the fight or flight or the competition or the judgment or the separation itself, any of those things. And, and, and really, you know, what it is, is it's, you know, being able to recognize yourself, like, looking through the eyes of source as source, seeing source in all things. And it becomes this very comfortable scenario. And, and, and I have little techniques. And one of the things I say is if you say to yourself, I love every one of my emotions. And especially if you can say that when you're in a place of fear, mm -hmm. uncomfortable and so upset, because what you're literally doing is you're taking your library of information, your consciousness to that so again, everything's about matching frequency. So once you bring that there, it dissipates out any of the denser frequencies. Because really, I feel this journey is simply about, you know, releasing out all of the illusions because we're it is a whole, right? We it's always been unity. We're always here, but we've forgotten because what we've been playing in is the way I described is this inorganic power and inorganic vulnerability. So inorganic power is something greater or less than something else. Organic power is, is there's nothing greater than that that I am because I'm source consciousness. And inorganic vulnerability is a weakness or a fear, but organic vulnerability is it is what it is. I am what I am. So what we're attempting to remember is there's nothing greater than that, that I am. It is what it is. I am what I am. And that's the kid on the playground. It's just going, okay. So if we started to have our experiences like that and we're just the flashes, whatever, and we go in, not to say that you won't have emotions. I've had tremendous emotions because humanity is playing out good and bad, right and wrong. And because you know, our participation, and I believe that pretty much everybody has played on both sides of the fence, perpetrator, perpetrated, you know, in this whole game. And, you know, I think we came into recognizing, I think many individuals participated in what we call the downfall of humanity, not for a place of nefarious reasons, but a place of feeling that we're helping. And in, in essence, it did. It's, it, it, it expanded consciousness vastly. But we learned about free will and we learned about sovereignty. And the example that was brought to me in relationship to that would be like, say you're a parent and you have this child that's playing in the dirt and, and maybe that um, child's natural gravitation would be towards plants, but you're a medical doctor. So you shift that child in to become a medical doctor. Well, in essence, you've taken them off of their natural evolutionary path. So you really went against their sovereignty, but we wouldn't recognize it that way. And I think this is what we're waking up to is like the subtleties in the ways, some very obvious in some other ways, you know, and, 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 and that's why it, it, it is just about that letting go and that, you know, that, that, um, but, but the ways in which to do it you know, or all the different techniques in different ways, you know, and I have a lot of things that I can suggest in terms of the physical body and lots of different things of, of how all this works, but. We can say, and some of the Q and A's are gonna give some great examples of that. So we'll get into that in a little bit. So mm -hmm. I guess, let me give an example. It's, I have someone that I've been working with for a while and and this person suffers with a lot of anxiety and she knows that it's anxiety and she knows that it's a belief senses and the way she was raised and, and she's gone through the layers of, of understanding, being with it, of uh, using different techniques to shift it, but still it keeps showing up. Mm -hmm. So she's gone through some of the suggestions at certain levels of uh, what you're talking about, by I'll call it having a relationship with, with those aspects that are coming up and bringing the unification. What would be a next step for someone like that? 
to get to a deeper layer of the truth and to and to neutralize that through zero points? How could they get to that zero point foundation to to create a shift? Well, what I felt right away with that individual is that has everything to do with ego. That has everything to do with personality and and, and identification of self. Mm. You know, it's when we identify ourselves as a certain way, and then we need to keep that up for some reason. And that's really what that's about. Mm. And that's why it's this greater surrender. That's why I keep talking about that. That's when those anxiousness and all that comes in is because I have a certain persona, but I don't really, you know, I think I do. I, I want to, I'm supposed to, I'm carrying some type of energy that shows it. everybody's reacting to me in a certain way. So therefore I'm showing up in a certain way, but I'm not confident in it. I'm not sure I'm, I'm disassociating in different ways, perhaps with it. I'm doing, what am I doing? And that's mm. what it is. It's, you know, and I'm watching that. It's like all these different patterns of moving, which then creates this idea of like anxiousness, anxiety, all that kind of stuff. So it's that, and it's all coming from the solar plexus because the solar plexus is where we identify ourselves in the human world. So it's not coming to the heart space. So, so this is about that. Can I let go? You know, and, and I remember things like that of like even coming on your show or different things in the beginning where we're, hmm. we're like, Ooh, I don't know. And I'm, I'm showing up in public and, 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 you know, and until you get out of your head, cause that's really what it is. It's moving from the head to the heart space. And when you have that face rest and surrender, you can take a breath and just show up and let it happen. And, you know, it's a lot like, like say, um, you know, you meet somebody for the first time you're attracted to, and you know, that nervousness and all that stuff, but what do we do? We shut that down. Well, what if I didn't, what if I let myself sweat bullets and did whatever? And then, so what happens there is you have to imagine that suddenly a little kid shows up. And, and you want to be the best parent that you can be for that child, which I believe is just letting them do their thing, because that's what it is. It's the younger part of self or another aspect that's like all nervous, right? And so you let that happen. But the most important is later when you're by yourself and you start to have that dialogue, oh my God, what do I do? Blah, blah, blah. And that's when you have to start to remember that that's the child and that's also you. And you say, you know what you did? You showed up. Good for you. Thank you. I'm happy. And so it really is this, this dialoguing. We need to, to communicate. This is this deep dive in self-love. That's really what it is. It's like, wait, I love you enough and I'm going to show up. And, and, and it's that nervousness of like, okay, I don't know, but we're going to let that because we have to let that innocent, that truth, that pure soul self come to the surface because that's the only reason that those happen. That nervousness all happens because something in me is like, I'm not, I'm not sure, but it's like, okay, we're not sure you're right because it's new because it's experience. But remember, if we go back to, I'm a kid on the playground, it is what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other piece in that is because we're super sensitive. And if, if you're very empathic, you're feeling everybody. And so again, it's that, and this was my journey. That's absolutely my journey. I was like, oh, so I was, you know, you, you, you then, what do you do? You do the comfortable, you go into that masculine mental energy and you show up and you act whatever, you know, cause that's what we're trained to do until you don't, you mm -hmm. know? And so that's why I said, this is about mastering the mind and about dropping into that unknown. We're not taught to be in the unknown. We're taught to be in the known. So it's about getting comfortable in the uncomfortable getting familiar in the unknown and, and mm -hmm. discovering in that, in that space, you know, and the more we, and just practice it, it's really is just the practice. And, and the practice is in the privacy of your own body, first and foremost, and then in your own home, you know, we're trained. I've talked about this before that we're, 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 we're playing out three major frequencies, enslavement, imprisonment, and sacrifice. So we enslave ourselves within our belief systems. We imprison ourselves within the mind. Then we sacrifice. We sacrifice health for money until we don't. And in this story, we've been convinced to bring all the characters, the mother, the father, the whatever, inside our head, standing there 24-7 in whatever energy they are, and we're reacting to them until we're mm. not. And so this is really what it is. It's waking yourself up to what am I doing by myself? You know, when I woke myself up to this, I realized I was like hovering over my bed. Like I wasn't resting into the mattress. 
until I finally was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? You know, and it's, this is where I have my, my controversial moment where I says the surrender, it's like suicide, but not like killing yourself, but it's like that level of like, I don't care anymore. I just got to let go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And that's what it is. And, and that's when we let go of that separation. That's the inorganic separation is the illusion that I'm by myself. I'm alone. No, you know, doesn't mean that everything here or the humans, as a matter of fact, it's the opposite story. And this is why it can be challenging is once you drop into yourself, most likely those around you are going to disappear because you've been matching unless they're willing to shift. But we get much more comfortable in the aloneness of authenticity mm -hmm. than that loneliness and that separation place, right? Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's not about shifting the belief that you're alone so that you convince yourself that you're not alone. It's actually <laughs> being willing to be so alone Yes. That you go so deep into it that you go through the cycle of going, wait, first of all, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and then it's like, hold on. It's like, I'm less alone than I've ever been in my whole life. But we become a matching frequency because now we're not trying to manipulate the counter of being alone exactly. when the fluidity of what's, what wants to be created for us. That's The aloneness is really teaching us the gift of the other side, the flip side of the coin. But yeah, we have because... to listen. Yes, because when what that is, is that's coming into authentic relationships mm -hmm. because, you know, relationships typically are transactional, they're seductive, they're persuasion, you know, it's like 99%, not 100% of conversations are manipulation. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that I'm just saying something, I'm trying to put something in you or take something from you. So, so this is what we're realizing when we wake up and go, wait, this is exhausting. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm playing a character in my own life and is what is this character and why am I doing that? Oh, you know, but the beauty of it is, and this is, this is the thing I keep wanting to drive home when we can drop into that in the privacy of our own self, we're radiating that message out to the universe and it will come back into your reality. And, and people say, well, you can't just be in your home and like drop into this and everything happens. It's like, well, yes, you can, but, you know, and, and you will have physical movements, but the physical movements that you will have will be authentic mm -hmm. to you. Not this mind game of saying, I'm going to calculatingly do this thing to get this thing and then hold on to that thing. Yeah. Because the reality that we're talking about here is that, you know, People, it's about, you know, fear, fear and fear of death. Like people can say, well, even if they're not fear of, of physical death, they are fear of the death of a relationship, of, of money, of all these types of things. But the irony is life itself is nothing more than, than experiences of life and death. That's what it is. That's what the entire life is, because it's about move movement. It's a constant motion. And this is what we're not taught. We're taught to box it, hold it, you know, and it's like, that's the game. It's like, no, we evolve. We shift and everything's together. And it's this constant motion, right? Of, well, of and, and we really have to tune into ourselves and look at the truth. Where are we looking for transactional relief? If mm -hmm. I do this, I'll get relief from this. I don't have to be with that. I it's It goes away. We're, where are we really saying, okay, I'm really ready to be in a relationship with this and explore it fully so that it can transform where it's wanting to take me next, not just for the exactly. relief. Exactly. Where is this leading me? And there's a big difference, y'all. And it's it's coming up really strongly in the field now. Again, this contraction that's happening collectively, it's happening for us because it's bringing those things up. Mm -hmm. Because we know we've been enough through those transactional kind of let me feel okay for a little bit and then I'll get back to it eventually, but at least I feel good for a little bit, but the cycle well, it, isn't working for us anymore. And do we really feel good? I think no. that's, I think that's the thing is we're, we're defining, you know, some of the, some of the newer things that I'm doing too is about defining what authentic power, authentic vulnerability really are, really is the, what, what, what are those things? Cause we don't really know mm -hmm. what these things are until we have the, the authentic experience of them. And, well, we're setting ourselves up for, to not trust because we'll do something it'll work for a little while then the sh the shoe will fall off the other foot again 
Right. It's like, well, I can't trust it. I can't keep doing that. Nothing works. I'm just stuck. I'm resigned to this. And it's just, it's self-perpetuating. So we have to go deeper. We have to open it. I love that you're bringing this into the, into the program, the special offer and all that, because it really provides a pathway to, for the alchemy to truly happen, not just to bubble up something and then for it to drop again. Yes. And, and when you think about separation, you know, one of the big things of separation is addiction. It is the separation. Okay. It's, it's connected, right? All addictions. And we have so many addictions. People are addicted to um, fear, to anxiety, to whatever, you know, because we are source consciousness and we bring in everything for a reason. Mm -hmm. And when you recognize that, when you own that and you say, wait a minute, what am I really doing? And you're willing to take that look, you'll realize what you're addicted to. And it's in that, that's where all this comes from. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's all the, the cycles. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love that you talked about that. This is amazing. <laughs> Kathleen, I'd love to get into some Q&A because I, I know that's going to crack some more things open in the field. And we're going to get into special offer in a little bit, y'all. And then we're going to get into transmission as well, a process. So still lots happening here today. If y'all want to ask questions, raise your hand. There's already some people with their hands raised. I'll get to you in a little bit. But I, I want to go to a question that came from Kate first. Uh, her name's Kate. She said she writes, help. I feel stuck. Um Truth is, I felt stuck for a very long time, 13 years. I've practiced these techniques you both were suggesting, and it has helped, but nothing seems to be helping me truly get to a different place. What am I needing to see or learn? Please, I love your help and healing insights, and what can be done to get moving and freeing up what is possible from a higher place of living? Well, I think it's everything we've been talking about. First of all, dialoguing. So, you know, communication to self is what is some of the issues. So mm -hmm. if I feel, if I feel I'm stuck and I'm seeking something to unstick me, <laughs> it's everything we just talked about, you know? So, so the very first thing is saying, wait a minute, why am I feeling that I'm stuck? What's really happening to me? And I can feel with you, Kate, it's around the heart. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely the heart space that there's something in you. And it's it's a connection between the solar plexus and heart. So it's identification of self. There's frustrations, there's angers. Um, that feels very, very prominent. Like I'm so frustrated, I don't get it. And there's so much comparison to others, to other things, to that, you know, and, and it, there just needs to be this greater surrender of your life experience. You know, it's, it's, it's playing out the victim, you know, we, we, we're, we're programmed again to play out the victim victimizer frequencies. And so if we play that victim, like I'm broken, there's something wrong with me and there's no judgment in anything that I'm saying. It's just, this is the truth about where we are when we, when we, do that and we're holding on to that story that's what's doing it and i can feel it's all wrapped around the solar plexus and and constricting the heart space and so it's like taking that breath and saying wait a minute what is the energy that i'm carrying in this story you know i'm carrying it can i just let go can i be in the unknown can i be in the unknown and begin to feel because that's what that's what I'm looking at. And I can feel it. You know, when I do the activation, this is going to really help. I could do I could do some clearing um, for this now if you want, John. I mean, I don't know. It's up to Let's you. do it. Yeah, it could be wonderful for several people. The feeling stuck energy. Yes. Yes, because I feel uh, a lot into the energetic. So, Kate, I'm going to ask you to um, close your eyes and take some deep breaths because I'm just going to move into the energetics here. We want to expand. Um, the solar plexus energy. I want you to take some deep breaths. What I'm doing is I've, I've, I've sort of stepped into your central channel and I'm like pushing out the solar plexus. So I'm, I'm, 
bringing to the surface um, a lot of this energy, which was really kind of pent up, felt like anger and so on. It's like you might even feel a little bit of a shakiness in your body. So I'm just pushing this out. I'm going to open this up. I'll let this go. Taking a deep breath. So I'm going to open that. And I'm also going to move some of this energy up your central channel and into the heart space. So I'm going to communicate um, with the solar plexus uh, information with the heart space. So I'm going to expand this, take some deep breaths. I'm just expanding your torso a little bit. Taking out some of that constriction, the pressure, that separation, and this, there a lot of separation from the heart space here. Let's take a deep breath. It's safe to be me. It's safe to be free. It's safe to let go. I feel a lot of resistance. So I'm going to encourage you to just Take bigger breaths, deeper breaths up into the chest cavity. So I'm going to expand this energetic here. There's a definite hold here of um, of this constriction. There's a there's a there's an identity here of self. Uh, it's a forgiveness. So we're going to go a deeper forgiveness and this feels like a forgiveness to take a deep breath. That's good. Um, siblings or father, mothers, definitely family. That's good. We're opening that up. And we're going to bring in this divine forgiveness, which is forgive me, forgive you, love me, love you, compassion for me, compassion for you, gratitude for me, gratitude for you. Again, a bigger breath. And I'm going to take off your back, um, just like pressure, like something pushing you. Uh, it definitely feels um, male, like a male energy. It's good. Deep breath. Yeah, it's so much pressure about um, I have to perform, I have to do. Yeah, I'm going to take this out of your spine. Again, big breaths. I'm going to bring in a very high frequency of um, bright, bright diamond light of prime creator. And we're going to, I'm going to bring this into the front end of your body and bring it towards the back, like a thick plasmic field. And so I'm just going to bring that into your spine so that you'll have a greater sense of feeling supported. Taking a deep breath, that's good. Just going to move that a little bit more back. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm taking father's energy out. If you had good relationship, we'll leave that. But I'm just taking out that energetics. There we go. That's much better. Deep breaths. Safe to be me. It's safe to be free. It's safe to let go. There we go. I'm going to expand your field 360 degrees. That's great. And I'm just going to drop in the 18th dimensional diamond consciousness of water. So we're going to bring in divine clarity and divine flow. And I'm going to drop that into the fluid systems in the body, the brain fluid, spinal fluid, interstitial fluid, all becoming divine clarity and flow. Great. Okay. So I'm going to leave you in that field. And so um, this clarity and this energy is just going to continue to move within your body. We opened up the space there for you, um, it's just gonna, I'm gonna open up the portals in your feet, allowing you to root and ground into the crystalline core as your crown is completely open to prime creator, as above, as below, as below, as above. So we'll just, let me open your crown just a little bit more, deep breath. That's good. 
So we'll bring this into this present moment, right? Okay. Uh, also, I feel uh, pink light of divine mother just came in bringing divine peace. And so you can beautiful. tell me how you feel. Thank you for that, Kathleen. Um, mm -hmm. Scarlett and Jen are both feeling it. There's other people writing in as well. So beautiful what's yeah. coming through. Um, yeah. There's more of this. Y'all, we're going to get some more Q&A. Uh, I want to get into the special offer, though, because this is pretty robust, what you're offering here. And it's really about the calibration and the reintegration of the um, mind-body connection that really bring it back into unity. Um, the link for the special offer, y'all, is in the chat box. You'll see the link highlighted in blue there. Um, April, put it in one more time so I can see all the way at the bottom. Chris put it in there. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Y'all click on that link or open up a new browser and type in beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Catalina 34. And that'll take you to the same special offer page. And Catalina, guide us through what those who participate are going to receive and how this can help them. Yeah. Well, certainly I highly recommend it to everyone, mm -hmm. anyone. So um, it's restoring the original soul fragment and releasing the imprint of separation from the brain and body. So uh, it's all done. Uh, they're, or they're all pre-recorded so that you have instantaneous ac access. Everything I do is in the zero point. So no matter when you listen, it's in the now moment. Each time you listen, it's in the now moment. So it's just going to be moving through that physicality in any places of the separation, which is everything we just did. You know, it's a really great part of um, that those illusions and the ways in which you have um, unintentionally separated. Uh, there's just there's so many multidimensional layers with this, uh, and and like I said the the body is super important because we are energy and frequency and the experiences through the body. And so really everything we're talking about is relating to this. And, and this time right now with this immense separation, particularly in the United States, the elections and all that, I mean, there's so much in this. Highly recommend you step into this energetics because I think it will be very beneficial to bring your energy into a zero point field. Uh, so I, I really mm -hmm. think in, in the timing for this particular one is very poignant, you know, right now. So I, I think, yeah. I, I really recommend um, just stepping into, I mean, we, we can go into, you know, a lot of detail, but I think really just everything we've been talking about in relationship to this is really what this, this we'll call this course is about is these are activations. So there it's a, it's a living codex. So, you know, your, your energetics is moving with it and will continue in, in everything that I do is like that. So highly recommend. You go deep within. You've got nine classes that they're yes. recorded. Mm -hmm. And how long are each, is each class? Uh, it depends. I mean, some this, it can be an hour, half an hour, forty five minutes, something like that. But and and you can do them repeatedly, and I recommend that to continue doing them over and over because each time you do them, it goes deeper and deeper and and more and more, and will expand you, you know, into the energetic field. And there, would you suggest doing it in order? From one from one class to the next, or can you jump around? Whatever you feel. What I always suggest is use your intuition. And for those that typically ask me, I say, you know, do one, and usually maybe for a week, and then repeat it during that week, and then start another one. Some people can do them one every two or three days. It depends on you know what you're feeling. Um, most of the time, I say do one a week, and then repeat that m many times during the week. You can journal. I do encourage a lot of journaling and things like that because a lot will come up. There's a lot of different energetics that come up with these types of things. Mm. Amazing. So. Well, th this is a robust class, y'all. That's $177. There's a two-payment option on it. And when you sign up very shortly after that, you'll receive your the recordings of downloads so you can start participating in, um, and work with the re-imprinting and the calibration um, and restoring the original soul fragmentation. And yeah. releasing the imprint of separation, yes. Yeah, and this is, remember, we're multidimensional. And, and so this is not just this lifetime, this is many lifetimes. And so it's it's uh, it's really multifaceted, the, the work that I do. I really appreciate that because a lot of things, you know, something that I've been talking about recently is the awareness of how we're bringing in our qualified energy into our current experience. And my qualified energy, that means all the experiences. Mm -hmm of different lifetimes and multidimensional realities. 
mm -hmm. into this physical body and having a conscious expression of that coming together to inform us what's possible for us next based on our choice. Um, and what's directing that choice? Are we, are, is that choice being directed because of separation and we haven't integrated or is it more from the wholeness of who we remember and know ourselves to be and really making a beautiful informed choice yes and think about you know one of the big separations is the separation mm -hmm. from the mind and the heart you know where we don't have coherency there yeah and and you know when when we can be in our heart space and then communicate to our minds and investigate what has been put in there you know, think of your mind as like a, you know, a, a, a treasure chest that you, is all sorts of stuff. And we might not think it's a treasure <laughs> because of the things in there, but we're on discovery. And so when we no longer have the separation there, because that's, again, what we're taught, we're taught to separate out and to to be this individual separation, you know, and, and even the, the idea of discovering my uniqueness, like we don't have to discover our uniqueness from an external perspective. We discover it through our knowingness, through our connectedness of our mind and heart and our, and our, you know, communication with this physical body. And we discover who we are because the way that we've been taught that I have to figure it out and then be unique. Well, that makes us separate. And think about that, right? Then humanity doesn't really like that. So here we are, we're, we're in this space. We're like, oh, I got to be the number one. And then you say the number one. Well, some people, you, they get people that follow you. And so they're the minions and that whole energetic. And that's that distorted relationship aspect that we're playing with. Or you have people that don't like you. So, but when you are uniquely yourself, because you are in that, there's no, that separation of your own self, you're just showing up. You see, that's the difference in what this field is. So like with myself is I'm showing up in the zero point. So I could say anything within this field and it has a very different expression because I'm absolutely in neutrality versus mm -hmm. directedness that happens. And that is one of the biggest separations that we do. We become separate from our own heart space, our own field of source consciousness. And so that's a big piece of what this, this course does. But these are these ways and we don't even recognize. And so we have this illusion because we think of duality that we need to be separate. But duality is within. You know, light and dark both equally support us. You know, the masculine and feminine is us. The mental and the spiritual is us. So we have a sense of duality, but it's a oneness. And this is the difference, you know, and they are very different, like the masculine and feminine in terms of the mental and the spiritual energetic. So the mental energy is a blueprint form that's also moving, but that's very, very different than the spiritual emotional that is a, a movement aspect within that form, you know, so, so there's the, the authentic duality aspect and it's not separate. You need one with the other. You know, it's just expressions and experiences. So beautiful. <laughs> Y'all in the special offer, it's all there. It's 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 a lot of transmissions, a lot of alignment that takes place and calibrating you back mm -hmm. to you, back to yourself. Yeah. Um beautiful. Kathleen, and let's go to some more QA and we'll get into the transmission in a little bit. I, I don't want to go there quite just yet. Um, sure. But Tatiana, I'm guided to call on you if you want to unmute your microphone and if you want to turn on your video, that could be wonderful as well. Uh, hello, I'm sorry, I can't take, uh, I can't. Uh, That's okay. What's your question for Catalina? Uh, well, my question is that I'm um, attacked by black magicians and I don't know how to stop it. Uh, they live above uh, my apartment and there is some kind of device that is transmitting destructive energies. I'm affected by it, but I don't know how to stop it. Could you please help me? You're affected by what you feel is dark magic, you said, from... The uh, well, the they, they have a device that is transmitting some destructive energies, and I don't know how to stop it. I'm also psychically attacked by Black magicians, so I don't know how to stop mm -hmm. it. Well, I think as you expand your own energetics and awaken your own heart space, you expand 
outside of that energetic. And, you know, when, if we have those types of things, we have contracts and agreements that we're unaware of that we are aligning to because everything's matching frequencies. So in order to shift that, we have to first ask, why is this in my field? How is this serving me? And what part of me is connected to this? So, so this is, this goes back to that expanding your energetic field. So, because when I feel your field, there's a density around your field because you have this thought that somebody's doing something to you. It's, it's again, it's, and this is without any judgment, but it's playing that victim role. And so if I align to that, then therefore I'm aligned to that. But if instead I'm curious and I say, no, I'm not interested in this. I'm curious why this is here. Then you are, you're bringing light to that. You're raising the frequency above that. And then none of that energetic can affect you. You know, so it's, it, that's what I'm feeling. Cause I can feel your energetics and I can feel as I'm, as I've stepped into your energy, because we're communicating with it. I see a lot of light. I can feel that. I feel like it's the, those density are breaking away, but these beings, these people, you know, they, they're, you've had timelines with them. You've, you've played in these fields yourself. There are energetics that have played in this and there are, and it's, it's kind of around your, your field. So it's about severing contracts and agreements and awareness about that. And so, you know, which we can do, you know, it's just making that agreement. You know, we, we sever all contracts and agreements seen and unseen, known and unknown to any of the darker energy. And, uh, and I release this with absolute sovereignty and divine forgiveness, which is the forgive me, forgive you, love me, love you, compassion for me, compassion for you, gratitude for me, gratitude for you. And when we're doing that, we're moving into the heart space of those beings that feel this desire or this need to play in these games because they don't recognize their own sovereignty. They don't recognize their own light. So I'm seeing that. So, so as you continue to release that energetic and, and the, the 18th dimensional diamond consciousness of water just stepped in to bring you divine clarity for this so that you can open up your field deeper. Does this make sense to you? Uh, yes, thank you. Actually, I think the reason why they're attacking me is because uh, my father performed satanic ritual on me um, multiple times, and I would love to release these contracts. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I would say that really more that's probably best in a private session mm -hmm. uh, that I you would come for, because I think that that's a bit more involved. Uh, I think as we do the activation here, I can remove a lot, like in this field, they're not here. So any of that isn't in this field, but um, I can feel that energetic with you. And it's, it is about pulling that, which again is from the solar plexus. So I can feel that releasing and, and it's, it, we need to come into ownership about why that was in our field. So when we have those types of things occur in our, in our realities because we've had participation with them uh, ourselves in other, in other aspects. And so that's really where we want to open that and make that agreement when we have that. And I would suggest for you, you know, really within your, your soul's agreement to ask that and say, am I only aligned to um, pure source, pure source light uh, the, and the one timeline unity consciousness law of one and really, and, and not from a place of defiancy, but it was a place of heart open, heart centered openness. Mm -hmm. That's what that feels like to me. All right, Tatiana, Thank you, you may want to go deeper with Catalina. Um, of course, a special offer there and you can reach out to her for a private session if you feel called to as well. Blessings yeah. to you, Tatiana. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank and, you. and flooding your house of light and love and, and supporting you so that you can be aware of what you hold within. Yeah. What's your true source? Yeah, and a huge um, amount of light just went to you, so just know yeah. that. Yeah. All right, Tatiana, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go now. I have a question that came in from iPhone. Welcome, iPhone. Um, it's written, I live predominantly in fear. I dialogue with myself to release it. I seek out programs, practitioners, and hundreds of supplements to regain health and purpose. Hoping an activation can help release these. And curious, other than an activation, um, as that can provide support, what else do you think would be beneficial for, for the person who's writing this in? Again, it seems to be the theme for tonight is the mm. same thing. It's about the solar plexus. So it's really that. So I like to use the example of how we create more fear. So 
you know, in order for us to have a physicality, right, we need a kind of container. And so the body is the container, right? So if, um, say, uh, we had, so so we're, we're bringing in our energetic field. So imagine if this were a room. And so imagine in the corner of the room, you have a candle lit. That would mean I have like 25% of the room is light. That means 75% of the room is dark. So the difference between light and dark is information. Light is information. Dark is the absence of information. So in this case, if that were your body, that would mean I would have 25% of me in my body. That means 75% is something else. What is that? It's the collective beliefs. It's my parents. It's whatever. Well, if we go back to the room, all I have to do is expand that candlelight across the room and all the darkness goes away. It's exactly the same thing within our body. So when you practice present moment, when you literally have your feet on the floor, I'm looking out my eyes, I'm in my room, taking breaths and expanding your light, then all of that darkness goes away. And it really is, it, it, you know, it sounds as simplistic, but it really is because what we do is, that's why the old adage, there's nothing to fear but fear itself, because what do we do? We contract in. That's why I said is if you say when you're feeling fear, if instead of you go, oh my gosh, I feel fear, you say, I love every one of my thoughts and my emotions. I love them. It begins to help dissipate that energetic and it does it instantaneously. So it's about taking a breath and saying, wait a minute, what am I doing? You know, this goes back to everything we've been talking about, about that ultimate surrender. That's the key to all of this, because there's a game being played that's causing humanity to contract, because if you contract, then I can, you know, siphon your energy and your light. But when you drop into just, just being in that present moment, if you just practice very small places, you know, and this is outside of this, but uh, I have a small book that I wrote that happens to be on my website. It's called The Pocket Guide to Presence, and it's an ebook. And it's, you know, $4, but it has uh, pictures and colors and techniques about getting and staying present. And some of the things are very simple. Like you wake up in the morning and your head starts taking off in your day and you bring yourself back and you ask yourself, what am I wearing? Why did I choose this? What's going on? Because everything's energy and frequency. So you want to start to notice what am I vibrating with? Because if you're having anxieties and fears, you've got things around you that are doing that 24 seven. You, you know, when, when I woke up to this, I realized that in my home, I didn't have anything that was me. You know, this was years and years ago because, you know, I had hand-me-down things from the parents or whatever, but you don't realize everything's frequency and energy. So it's perpetuating this, but we need to begin to wake ourselves up. Mm -hmm. What, what is in my environment? What colors am I doing? Is it, is it perpetuating that? You know, and, and this is a key to, to doing this, right? And and one other technique that I, I suggest too is practicing first times. So a first time is like, and you have to sort of work yourself up. So say you're you're going to your home and you're driving towards your home. And so you start to say to yourself, I'm going to this new place. I've never been there before. I wonder what it's like. And so you have a moment as you're driving towards your space, you see it to feel what's happening to me. You know, am I tensing? Am I not? So you begin to wake yourself up again. Like, what am I doing? Is it what happens when I when I see this person, my partner, my whatever? You know, these are the things that we need to begin to wake ourselves up to that we've bypassed. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's these are these are why we can do all this work, but we're not. You know, and and, and the other piece in this is, remember, the biggest fear is change. So, so we can, we can say, yeah, I really want to do this. But if the change means that I got to change my look or I got to change, you know, it's like, am I willing? What am I doing? Um, what am I holding on to? Because that's what is perpetuating this and creating that. And so it is that faith, trust, and surrender of like, wait a minute, what am I doing? Um, it's, it, it's very, very powerful. I think this is what we bypass. Yeah. So what's the role in, so again, she was asking for an activation. What's mm -hmm. the role of the activation? And, and does it surpass really being in relationship, really going into that place? Well, 
when I'm doing the activations, what I'm doing is literally just expanding your consciousness with you as you, that's, a, that's what I'm, I'm doing, which is why you feel so much better. So I'm literally touching your light, your soul, and sort of pulling it forward. And as we're doing that, everything's releasing. And so it is a shift. And then, then it's a matter of you are bringing it back because what are you doing? You're familiar. And this is, this is where I say mm -hmm. you know, we have to own how our current energy and frequency is serving us because it is serving you. Okay. You might think that this fear you wanted to go, but you're, it's familiar to you. You're keeping it for a reason. And, and, you know, this is again, my, my story with this is when I used to wake up in the morning and I would hear you're such a failure. And I, you know, was racing around trying to get things done. And, and the journey is you want to start to notice what is my thought and what is my emotion and more importantly, what's happening to this vehicle. So in my case is I, I woke up and I noticed, you know, I'm such a failure and I felt the energy and I realized there was some comfort in this. And I was like, mm. oh, I didn't judge it. I just noticed it. I was like, oh, I'm comfortable dialoguing. I'm a failure. I'm familiar. It's familiar. And so now that I have the authentic emotion, I can ask myself, do I really want this? And I was like, no. So then what began mm -hmm. to happen was you started to say, well, I might not know what success is, but I know I don't want to feel this. That's the moment we move from the head to the heart space. We go from the known to the unknown, but we're not taught to be in the unknown. We're taught to be in the known. So what began to happen for me is I started to say, well, what really is failure and what really is success and whose voice is this anyway? And what am I doing to myself? Mm -hmm. And this is the wake up. You know, we have to start asking ourselves like, wait a minute. I'm from memory talked about addictions. Often we become addicted to this identification of self because without it, who am I? Because the bigger fear is actually the fear of, being who I really am or stepping into my big shoes or whatever, you know, it's like being different. We, it's, it's just a convoluted. So, so it's, it's, this is this deep dive we were talking about before. And this, when you talk about separation, this is when I am separate from my, I am self, hmm. you see. It's, and y'all coming back, restoring the original soul fragmentation and releasing the imprints of separation yeah. from the brain and the body. And that's where it is. That's what we're being called to now. The body is ready to receive what maybe the consciousness has been activating, has been integrating, what their etheric and spiritual body is acclimating to as well. And the cellular memory in the body is coming back into restoration as well. And it's, it's a beautiful initiation into activating the light, the remembrance, the awareness, the, the absolute knowing within you. Um, and navigating in such a different way than what we've been entrained to for a long time. So the special offer of Catalina, y'all, is nine weeks. It's a nine-week activation series. And I love nine because it's a number of endings. Yeah. Ending the imprints yeah. of separation, right? Yeah. Uh, y'all, it's $177. There's a two-payment option. I hope y'all take advantage of it. The link is in the chat box once more. Uh, Kathleen, I know we're still going through an activation, but I want to take this question that came from Bridget before we get into the activation, because I think a lot of people may relate to this. So Bridget writes, um, I've discovered through all my processes of releasing all that I am not, that I've reached the point where I don't even know what I want to create. There's a fear and uncertainty. How can we bring in the confidence to create? <laughs> be the child, let mm. go and just allow yourself to explore. And this is where I said earlier that let go of all that doubt and trust and be as weird and different. You know, I, I joke about it. I say, I'm the weird one, you know, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't be, you know, any, any more strange and, and just allowing yourself. And it's really just, just, you know, discovering who you are in, in a playfulness, being very mm -hmm. playful. And, well, and there's a fear of if I don't know who I am, then other people don't know who I am. And if they don't know who I am, who am I? I'm going to be alone. I don't fit in. I'm the recluse. I don't get it. No matter what I create, it's not going to be under. It creates like this cycle of things that we can get caught in a loop. 
So what you're talking about there is all through the mind. And again, mm -hmm. what I say earlier, this is about mastering the mind. So that's just a story in the mind because yeah. reality is when you can say, I don't know who I am in a good way and be happy about that and discovery. And the other mm -hmm. piece is in this is when the ego can find its placement in a good way. And that is when the ego can take a back seat and let go. So the ego, you, you get to be playful because guess what? Your higher self knows exactly who you are. And mm -hmm. when you can let go and not be in charge through this little human mind and dialing and racing around and letting go, then your, your oversoul can communicate with you and your natural intuition will guide you. This is my story. This is everyone's story. I'm sure it's your story. It's all how we really mm -hmm. discover who we are is through that, you know, letting go and feeling. This is what we do. If we didn't have all this here and we're just kids, that's what we do. We'd show up and we would just gravitate towards something and we'd play with it and we'd decide and we would go and you'd have excitement and you'd have this and you have that and everything becomes fun. And, da -da. and the only reason it doesn't is because you're immediately told who you are, what you can and can't do. And we're, and we're not just told through verbal language. We're told through all of the information and all of the lifetimes and all of the things and everything that's taking place. And then all of the ways that these energies still want us to be in the box. So, you know, when you can realize that the box is the illusion, that's the illusion. But think about it. When we keep saying, I want to figure it out, what am I really saying? I want to be in a box. <laughs> that's what we're saying. Mm. But when we go, wait, do I want to be in a box? Because that's what happens. You go in the box. So you discover something, you get in a box and you go, oh man, I don't know if this is right. I feel well, I'm trapped now. I don't know what I'm doing. So then when you realize that, okay, no, just let it flow and allow. I mean, I'm really at the place I say every day, let go of everything, 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 really let go of everything. And I say, you know, I'm everything. And I, and literally when anything comes in, I say, if that person's not meant for me, please take them away and bring in what it is. And I, and I really have to take a breath and allow that because you really feel it. You know, it's like, no, when you really only want those things that are aligned with you, because you're just in that place of like, oh, no, I am no longer interested in fear. I don't, I am, I don't want, I, I'm not interested in fear. I'm not interested in, I'm just not interested in that. And I don't know what life is going to bring me. And I don't know what people are there, but you know what? I'm going to just explore and let it, and it becomes amazing. And I mean, mm. things come in, things come out, everything happens. And, and this is what we're not taught because this is the reality of, you know, energy and frequency and creation is a flow. It's a quantum field of motion. And this is what we begin to feel, you know, and it, and it happens when you can let go. And, but the story is like, oh, but I got it. Da, 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 da. It's like, well, okay. Bring it home. Start. So you can have a literal that says, I don't know where my money is coming from, but you have a choice of going, oh my God, I don't know where my money is coming from. Or, I don't have any idea. I don't know. And if you go in the second one, you go, oh, I have any idea. Then you can say, well, then anything can happen. I could win the lottery. I could get inheritance. Somebody could give it to me. I don't know. And now we're we're in that place where I say it's like the egos drop back. And so now then the higher self can come in and start to guide you and say, oh, here, maybe go this way and go that way. When you're just staying curious, notice when your body's going in this tension. And like, so, so I just take a breath and let go open up, you know, so it's, it, this is really easy and really hard because the easy part is we got to bring it home when we don't know anything else, bring it right here. What am I doing? Am I contracting? Am I doing, and just let go there. Cause that's not doing nothing. That's doing something amazing. Okay. It's just, these are the practices and some people have to practice in that level and others of different levels, but it's not good or bad, right or wrong. There's nothing about that. It's just that those that are at that very tense don't realize how empathic they are. And they're mm. feeling so many energies around and it's just dialoguing. So that's the mind. And when you can take a break from the mind and drop into the heart and just be in the unknown and go, okay, too much. I don't know. But, but notice that what are we taught to do? We're taught to distract, not drop into the unknown. We're taught, oh, go have a drink or go have sex or go do something or, or watch some program or something, right? Cause that's the addictive stuff. 
But if instead, no, I actually drop into the unknown and then I feel like, huh, maybe I just want to go for a walk or maybe what, what do I really want? You know, and this is the practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just a practice. It's a practice y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all let's, well, one more time, uh, Chris, put the link for the special offer in the chat box, please. I want to make sure everybody has access to that they can participate in these nine weeks. Um, Y'all, we're going to run the replay later this evening. We'll be up all week through the weekend. Uh, you can always find replays at beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash replay. Um, and Kathleen, oh, what activation are you guided to activate us with? Um. Well, let's just open the energy and I'm just going to open up the field and Beautiful. see what wants to, wants to move and shift. Okay. I'm actually going to change the sound here so you get all the nuances of everything I'm doing. So if you just want to close your eyes, take some nice deep breaths. あ、せっかくてね、かねもパパクリスタニバトチシコシナワカネモテテラカサリゲチシュミボスメリロコネマトトキセリラアカラアカナイロコンマポパスニゲテラコシニガライナダダダダダダダダダダダダダダダダダ
my full I am presence, several contracts and agreements, and disconnecting from the mind matrix with absolute sovereignty and divine forgiveness. Forgive me, forgive you, love me, love you, compassion for me, compassion for you, gratitude for me, gratitude for you. Take a deep breath. I'm going to reach into the heart space and disconnect. I'm pulling out any and all of this mind matrix frequencies of fear, of separation, of, um, of uh, just this warring type energetics. So I'm just going to pull this out, taking a deep breath. This is going to bring this, taking out all cords, uh, tags, um, hooks, energetics that are within the heart space. Taking a deep breath. <laughs> Calling forward the highest and most profound embodiment of my oversoul here and now and all soul fragments ready and willing to integrate, do so now. Take a deep breath. Calling forward the highest and most profound miracles and healing miracles take place this now divine moment according to divine law and order and the will of the oversoul. And we're going to ask for all that no longer serves you to simply release with grace and ease. I want you to imagine little particles like dirt floating out of your body. You don't have to know what they are. It's the limits, limitations, judgments, worthiness programs, fear programs. I'm going to take out a big portion of this collective warring separation fear programming. Taking a deep breath. I'm just going to pull this out. So we're disconnecting. Uh, any of the MK Ultra Mind Control, Holographic Inserts, Consciousness Traps, Reversal Timeline Loops, any 5G Sonic Frequencies, COVID Revival Frequencies, any of the Victim Victimizer Frequencies. Just going to pull this out, taking a deep breath. So she's going to put the Dino Gorda Racket in the I'm going to drop you into the crystalline core of the earth, calibrating, integrating all elements, earth, fire, air, water, ether, and the diamond blue plasmic flame of the sixth element to all aspects of self, mental, physical, spiritual, etheric, calibrating, integrating the quantum level of the carbon DNA to the crystalline DNA to the original human blueprint, the original human genome, the I am presence, the organic template, past, present, and future, and all space-time continuum from my conscious, subconscious, and cellular level. Take a deep breath. I'm going to bring another field around you, a very thick plasmic field, bright, bright, white plasmic field, a pure prime creator, and all that we're releasing we're going to replace with pure prime creator. So it's like sinking your body into it. So just imagine just letting go. This is the greatest opportunity to let go of all that no longer serves you. So It is said, it is so, it is said, it is so, it is said, it is so, it is done, it is done, it is done, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am that, done, that, done, that, so it is, so it is, so it is. Akwadi mochi mara ka nato tsuri mo shite kata mochi jade kana mochi da. Akaka ka ka shi ni kou me tara hou ba sada kete na ka sada mochi tsuri kata mochi da. So I'm going to bring this calibration into this present moment. Your crown is completely open to Prime Creator. Your root into Sophia Gaia is above, is below, is below, is above. Just going to open your crown a little bit more. Let's begin to imagine energetic roots coming out the legs, out the feet, wrapping around the crystalline core of the earth. These are crystal clear roots. As we're calling in that 18 dimensional diamond consciousness of water, taking a deep breath as I'm continuing to clear as we're going to bring this into this present moment. Clearing through that mind space. Just keep uh, imagining little particles floating out of the head, the hair, the skull, the brain. So just disconnecting more of that mind matrix. So 
No consciousness has dominion over my consciousness nor my body. Past, present, and future in all space time continue. I'm just going to bring this uh, clarity around you. I'm going to drop this into your heart space and bring you into this present moment. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Okay. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. Oh, Kathleen, thank you so much. Um, thank you for the amazing special offer and bringing that in. Um, thank you for seeing so clearly what we're stepping into, what we have access to, and how to get there, demonstrating that for us. Um, thank you for the transmissions today on the show. It's been amazing. Uh, and thank all of y'all for your great questions, the energy that you're holding, how open you are and courageous in these shifts. Yeah. Um, even in the being willing to feel the fear, the separation, the not belonging, the things not moving, that it's those, the awareness of even that speaks so much about what is moving through and and what's available so just blessings to all of y'all thank you for the light that you are and um remember you have a home and community here to support you on this journey and kathleen again thank you for supporting us on the journey yes and thank you and and everybody know you are not alone we are all mm. in this together and when we surrender when you surrender to that you're literally connecting to us to everyone mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. Have that as your awareness, you know, that when we're in that surrender, we're connecting to all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful, Kathleen. Y'all, yeah. thank you again. Namaste. Okay. I love you guys. And I look forward to seeing y'all on the next call. Take Bye, care. everybody.